1950 was the most uh, horrific experience that our army ever encountered in combat. Like some of our some of our people were veterans of the Second World War that had served in the, uh, the Battle of Bastogne, which was really a bad one, cold. And they said that this chosen reservoir area was about five times worse than the Battle of Bastogne. It was, it was pretty rugged. Uh, How it, you, I mean, do you have fires burning? Or could, no, you could no, burn no, fires? couldn't burn fires, couldn't have heat. We couldn't have we had fires no, no hot food. We had no hot food. food. At least we didn't have any hot food for about two and a half months. They would shuffle up hot coffee, but if you went down the hill to get the coffee off the hill, by the time you got back up the hill, it was cold. I didn't drink coffee in those days. The Douglas County History Research Center is in partnership with Library of Congress in completing these oral histories. We have a super group of transcribers. Um, we have five of them that are coming in and working on transcriptions, not only the Veterans History Project, but other oral histories that we have, which makes the Douglas County History Research Center very unusual in the fact that we can get our oral histories transcribed. Most institutions don't have that. When a person comes home from service, they don't usually talk about it. And uh, if they're uh, having a family, the young people don't, aren't interested in the subject. And as they get older, the children move out of the house and no longer hear that story. They're not in the environment any anymore. Therefore, in order to preserve that story, you should, should record it so that later on when the, the your children or relatives uh, that know you and want to know a bit about you, they can research this and find it. I think the project is important because we're getting the first-hand stories. It's not just the, the big overall pictures of the battles, the campaigns, things like that. It's personal recollections. And we were ferrying some radio guys from one place to the other and uh, they just issued random weapons to probably 10 of us uh, in case something happened we would have some weaponry to defend ourselves and we were sitting in the back and we were waiting at the compound to leave to get going and they're all radio guys and you got to understand that radio guys don't get the infantry training and typically don't get their hands on the guns and weapons as the rifles <clears throat> and there's an M79 grenade launcher fires a grenade, it sounds a little like a mailing tube when it goes off. And this fellow, who was a radio guy, who really had not seen one before, was playing around with it. And um, all of a sudden, uh, the group of us in the truck hear this pop. And uh, he had fired, and we looked, and his gun was pointed straight up. And you immediately wonder whether you get out of the truck and get exposed to this falling round, which is a grenade. Uh, dead silence in the truck because if you're in the truck and it hits just outside the truck you're going to be safe if it hits in the truck and you're in the truck you're over the first thing that happened is, is I think about eight of us piled on him and took his rifle away from him uh, and the grenade fell probably about 100 150 feet inside the truck and went off nobody was around nobody said anything it was a done deal but it could have been bad it could have been bad uh, and that to me is one of the kind of humorous things that occurred. For some of the veterans that um, we interview, this is often the first time that they've ever talked about their experiences and they find it a very cathartic experience. They are telling their story and we care about what happened to them and we want to honor their memories by keeping their stories and preserving them for the future. I'm a World War II veteran that uh, wears this cap to identify myself because we're a disappearing group of people. Uh, from 16 million that were in the Second World War, we're down to under 3 million. And, and uh, the estimated figures are something like 1,200 a day uh, disappear from this earth. We've got some of the oral histories that have been digitized already. So we've got some on our website that you can listen to from home. We also will provide anybody that wants to come in and listen to any of these stories. We have the equipment. Anybody is welcome to come in while we're open and listen to the stories. We have the transcripts. 
I think they do a full tape of which is about 90 minutes. If you're going to do this and want to uh, submit, your, uh, you can submit anything you want. Your copies of your discharge, uh, any awards that you may have gotten, uh, pictures that you might want to leave that might get lost over time. At least they get archived and they can be reproduced later on. As far as I know, the Veterans History Project doesn't have an end in sight. They are collecting stories to the current conflicts right now. It's an ongoing project as long as we can get interviewers to interview people and people stepping forward telling their stories. We're going to keep collecting them. We want to preserve their stories for the future. Jesse was transferred to the South Pacific and according to Jesse, the best assignment he could have had was being stationed in, they assigned him to the cook's tent. <clears throat> and I asked him about why he thought that was the best. They're the ones that prepared the food and naturally, you might be the last one to eat. The nice thing the nice being thing in a cook's tent, a cook's tent anything, anything special, special you always got. got. And you didn't have to worry about when you were going to eat. The New Zealanders used cook stoves that had drip kerosene for keeping it hot. They got it up to a certain degree. And I tell you, you never had any better eggs than they fixed with that. These were two cooks, they were from Connecticut, the original members of the division. Everybody came around and said, hey, how did you make those eggs like that? Baked goods was fantastic. We had ice cream, believe it or not. The ice cream was fantastic, came out from, from Auckland, New Zealand. So that's what made the cook's tent nice for me.